The EV battery market is kind of exploding right now. We have all of these new cell formats and chemistries that are promising higher and higher energy densities for lower and lower costs. Obviously, Tesla has been putting a lot of work behind their new 4680 cell, but it's not exactly been going as planned, which sucks. And that's led to a lot of problems with ramping up Giga Texas and led to Elon Musk calling his own factory a money furnace and much hysteria spread through the media. But we've got new information that would strongly suggest that Tesla is overcoming those production issues and the 4680 is starting to roll out as it was originally intended. Now, remembering that we are still in the very early stages and Elon has admitted that 4680 will not be a factor this year, but it will become important next year. So let's take a look at what Tesla is doing to make sure that happens. We can start with Tesla's primary effort to open up their battery arsenal, the 4680 cell production. This is one that we know has been an uphill fight for the company. Earlier in the summer, we saw Elon talk very candidly about how the problems with the 4680 cell ramp actually held back the Giga Texas Model Y ramp and led to the factory basically just sitting there inactive while money just burned away. This seems to be turning around. In a recent drone video from Joe Tegmeyer, we can see that there is now a pretty large stockpile of these structural battery packs standing by inside Giga Texas. From this view alone, it seems like there's probably a few hundred of them. Now, the 4680 equipped Model Y is still a bit of an enigma. We know that they exist, and we know that a very small number of customers have been given the opportunity to buy one and they are very happy with the product. But this vehicle is still not available for direct order. We also know that Tesla has been successful at getting the classic 2170 cell skateboard pack Model Y production rolling at Giga Texas as well. So plenty of cars are coming out of the factory, but it's impossible to distinguish whether they are the new Y or the old Y just by looking at the drone video. If we had to posit a theory, it would be that Tesla has worked out some of the kinks with their 4680 cell production in California, and they're in the process of stockpiling packs for a real production push of the new Model Y. We might even see it become available for order on the Tesla website, though I imagine that could still be a limited option. According to an insider report from CleanerWatt, who seems to really know what he's talking about, Tesla has solved a few major problems that they were previously facing with cell production. A lot of the problems were coming from the dry battery electrode process that Tesla is currently using on the anode side of their new cell. That's the negative terminal of the battery. It's a sheet of copper foil that Tesla is laminating with their dry electrode powder, which I believe is mostly graphite at the moment, though should contain more silicon in later versions. Anyway, the major issue was coming from the dry anode material, and this is something that Elon referenced on the last earnings call. He said, quote, some of the more challenging problems have been feeding the anode cathode material because we're using this revolutionary dry electrode process. According to CleanerWatt, the specific problem is clumping in the dry anode powder. So because it's being applied dry, it has to be pressed on by these big rollers that use high heat and pressure to make the electrode material stick to the copper foil. But if clumps develop, then they get stuck between the rollers and clog up the whole process. Then everything needs to stop for 10 minutes or so to clean the rollers. So that was obviously preventing the whole process from just whipping along all day like it's supposed to. The report says that Tesla has been able to solve this problem by adding an extra step to processing the powder to create a finer grain. And then they store it at freezing temperature and feed it into the rolling machine cold. This has virtually eliminated the clumping problem and kept the production line moving. So that is great news. Again, shout out to CleanerWatt for the reporting. 
someone get this man some furniture or at least an appliance for his kitchen. I don't know if he just went to a condo, opened a house one day and got trapped inside forever or what is going on, but he needs help. Anyway, moving on. It looks like another slowdown in the process was coming from the tabless design of the cathode and anode terminals. We know that instead of having a singular tab that moves electrons in and out of the battery cell, Tesla had the idea to cut hundreds of little tabs into the edge of the foil sheet and then fold all of those flags over towards the center of the battery to create one solid connection that allows electrons to flow freely throughout the massive roll of electrode material. This is the only way that such a wide diameter cell like the 4680 can be usable in a high power application like an electric car. Typically, wider cells equals lower power. That's why Tesla still uses the little 18650 cells in the Model S Plaid. So, the tabless design is critical to success, but it's also a major complication. All of those hundreds of tiny flags that are laser cut into the edge of the metal foil need to fold over each other to perfectly create a solid connection with no short circuits. If any of those folds go wrong, a flag ends up bending the wrong way, or getting pushed down into the center of the roll, then the whole cell has to be rejected and taken off the line. Another obvious slowdown to the output. Again, according to the report, this is something that has been identified and fixed at the cell production line, and the problem has reduced by 90%. This is vastly increasing the yield of the production line. And the last major issue was just a misalignment of the electrode rolls. So inside the cell, there are three main layers, the anode, cathode, and separator. They are long, thin sheets that get coiled up tightly, and that's called the jelly roll. It's a fun name. But sometimes that roll doesn't line up perfectly. Like, you know when the toilet paper comes out too far and you just try to roll it back up, but now the end looks all wonky? Same thing happening to the jelly roll. Obviously, they're talking about tolerance of a millimeter or less, but still, it means that the roll doesn't fit into the case properly and the cell has to be rejected. These all make perfect sense because we are looking at issues associated with the unique design of the 4680. The dry battery electrode, this has never been done at scale as far as I know, Tesla purchased Maxwell Electronics to get this exclusive technology so they should be the only company that has it. The tabless design is also an industry first as far as I know, and with the much longer jelly roll for the much wider cylindrical cell, it makes sense that they would start to hit some alignment issues. So, these all make perfect sense, and therefore, I don't think it's cause for any concern at all. If they were hitting problems that didn't make sense, then I'd say get ready to panic. And it seems like there is already a fix for most of these issues, which we can imagine would translate into the new stockpile of battery packs that have materialized at Giga Texas. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. To add even more intrigue to the situation, CleanerWatt was back with a follow-up report, still trapped in the empty condo, but also still receiving insider information on 4680 production. The word on the street is now that Tesla has begun implementing an entirely new machine to produce the 4680 cells. This is apparently an upgrade in efficiency that combines three separate machines into one single machine. The three machines are responsible for, number one, laser cutting the flags into the edge of the electrode foils, and then fold them over using puffs of compressed air to create the tabless connections. Number two, rolling those electrode sheets with the separator layer into the tight jelly roll. Number three, a welding machine that attaches the current collector plates to the tabless terminal end. This current collector is placed in between the jelly roll and the end cap of the cell casing. We know that one of Elon's top philosophies is the best part is no part. So turning three machines into one machine makes perfect sense for the Tesla ethos. 
I would actually speculate that this three-in-one machine is the thing that Tesla is building up here in Canada with that new manufacturing plant in Toronto. We know that they opened that facility late last year as the first Tesla branded manufacturing facility in Canada. Technically, it's in Markham, Ontario, but I'm sure most of you don't know where that is. So let's just say Toronto. Close enough. All we ever heard about was that Tesla would use the plant to manufacture equipment that would be used in their gigafactories for battery production. So it would make sense that Tesla is using the space to design and manufacture a whole new multifunction machine that will roll out to Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. This new machine actually makes what Tesla is referring to as the second generation 4680 battery cell. Only about 5% of all 4680s that are produced right now are the second generation cell, and it's still in a prototype stage at the moment. These Gen 2 cells are distinguishable by a unique design on the bottom of the cell with this spiral indentation pattern. This is something that we've seen come up recently in Tesla's latest videos of the 4680 production, and it's something that raised speculation, but no one really knew what it was. According to Cleaner Watt's report, that new part is now serving double duty as both the current collector and the end cap. Again, the best part equals no part, so definitely tracks with something that Tesla would do. Apparently, that three-pointed indentation is laser welded directly to the tabless electrode terminal, and then the liquid electrolyte is added through the hole in the center before the case is sealed. By removing that separate current collector, Tesla is actually freeing up more space inside the cell casing, and that means they can actually make the jelly roll taller to fill that excess space, which means more active electrode material, and that means more energy density in the cell. This actually tracks with a fairly well substantiated rumor that came out during the summer that Tesla would increase the energy density of the 4680 with a second generation cell available in 2023, going from 98 watt hours per cell to 108 watt hours per cell. And then in 2024, that energy density would increase again with a third generation cell at 118 watt hours. So the first jump will be thanks to an increase in packaging efficiency. That makes perfect sense. And then we can actually track back to something that limiting factor was saying in his 4680 teardown video. He noted that Tesla hasn't even started using silicon in the anode material. And we know that silicon can increase the energy density of a battery cell. So maybe that boost from Gen 2 to Generation 3 energy density is then coming from a change in the chemistry of the cell. With those two improvements to the physical design and to the chemistry, I'm pretty sure that would put the 4680 as one of the most energy dense battery cells on the market. So that is where we are at right now in Tesla's next generation battery design. Still very much the early days, still working out the kinks in the process. It's going slow. We'll probably only see that one limited production Model Y using 4680 cells for the rest of this year, or it might be the only 4680 equipped Tesla until the Cybertruck hits production sometime, hopefully in 2023. It's hard to call it, but things seem to be going according to the most recent plan that we heard on the Q2 earnings call, and that's the best that we can hope for right now. What do you think though? Do we get a full transition to 4680 Model Ys in 2023? Or when can we at least order one without having to play the delivery lottery? Let us know your ideal Model Y buying strategy in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.